Welcome to this new lecture. I believe I have been shooting you with lots of information throughout the previous lectures. But I also believe that with some practice you will get up and running with analyzing census data and GIS data in, in general. Also, let me remind you that after this series of videos, I'll hand you a PDF exercise where you can work with another set of attributes from the US Census. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the discussion section. So we have this shapefile now with these blog groups for San Francisco. And we have some fake supermarkets. Uh, what we want to do is create a thematic map, which will have a color ramp and will show the number of people with, with a master degree for each blog group through a certain color. And I've already showed how you can stylize your map. And so you go to uh, properties of layer and then to the style tab. Now what we're interested at is to actually categorize the values. So you go to classify. Oh, first you need to define the column, of course. And then you go to classify and you, and you have all the values for this column. And then pick a meaningful color ramp. All right. And click OK and you are done. So you can see that some, some certain areas have actually more people with, with a master degree compared to others. And you can apply a transparency to the layer. So you can see the background, which is an open street map. No, this is great. A problem, however, with this is that these data are not normalized. And what do I mean by that? Well, we really have the number of people for, for, each, for this blog group. We know that this has, let's say, 100 people with a master degree. And this one here has 200 people with a master degree. But this blog group here may have a population of, say, uh, 2,000 people. And this one here has a population of 5,000 people. That's why you find more people with a master degree here. So what we need to do is normalize this attribute and the way we do that is by dividing the the number of people with a master degree by the population of the block group so we do that for each block group and you should keep uh, normalization in mind always when working with gs if you if you really want to to make a map with the correct message that doesn't mislead your your audience and so in the next lecture what you'll do is download the total population count for our layer on a blog group uh, level. And then we will join that table to our shapefile and then we'll divide the number of master degrees by the number of people in that blog group. And then we'll make the map again. So I'll see you in the next lecture. As I said in this uh, lecture, I'll normalize the master degree attribute by the total population for each blog group. So that means I need to download the population attribute, so the total number of population. I had a previous selection here, so I'll yeah, clear this up. Go to advanced search again. So it's the same procedure. But in, in this, uh, you go to topics and to people. And now you need basic count. So you don't need any specific attribute like age and sex and age group and disability education or so on and so forth and you want population total and that was added to my selection here and you already know the procedure how to download these kinds of files because i showed that to you in the second lecture of this section so once you select the topic you go to specify the geographic area so you go to name and we want block groups and then we have block groups for uh, many counties, for every county actually at the moment, so you will need to filter the state. So we want California. And then go and find the county of San Francisco, which should be on the next page. Here it is. So you select that and add it to the selections. So you have two selections now and close this window. And here is the thing we're after. 
So the total population for year 2014, five year estimate. So that matches our data. You go to download. Okay. The file was generated. Here it is. I'll put this in here. Demo. Yeah. Extracted. Close this. Delete the zip file. And I can open this with Atom. So be careful with the name. Uh, we're talking about total population, so that corresponds to be uh, 1003. So again, we have two rows here that play the, the role of a header. And the value we're interested at is total. So this is the first column, second, third, and then this is the fourth column. So which corresponds with this one here. So this is the population counts for every blog group of San Francisco. And this is the margin of error. So we want this one here, this one. And I'll delete this. Great. And save the file. And I'll go over to QGIS. And open the CSV file. So browse, and that should be here, demo, well, this is the file. And double check it to make sure it, everything is okay. Yeah, this is our column. So again, we need to join this table with the shapefile, just as we did previously with the attribute table of a master degree attribute. So you go over to the shapefile, Go to properties and then to joins and then plus sign. And then, yeah, this is the layer, the, the attribute table. And the join field is geo EID2, geo ID here. And what we would like to have is this attribute. So the total population. Okay. Apply OK again, and let's check what we got in the shapefile. So this is the population. Hmm, we got around 1000 people here, and 137 of them have a master degree. This is much lower, and so on and so forth. This is quite an educated uh, blog group, I don't know why. Anyway, what we need now is to have another column in this table which will show the, the percentage of uh, people who have a master degree for each blog group. And the way you do that is inside this table, this window. So you go over to Open Field Calculator. So the Open Field Calculator is where you perform operations with, with your attribute data. In this case, what you want to do is divide the values of this column by this one. So the values for the master degree attribute. This is a symbol for division. And then we have this attribute. And be cautious with these options here. If you leave it a whole number, you may get some odd results. So what you want instead is decimal number. And you also want to specify a field name. So let's say master degree normalized. Press OK and see what you got. So this is the ratio of people who have a master degree in for, for each blog group. As you can see, we have quite a lot of digits here. So a better way to do this to, would be to actually have less digits. Uh, that would be more readable. So I'll go ahead and delete this column. So this one here. 
press OK and repeat the process again. So now you know how to delete the column and go over to fields. So this one divided by this one. Degree normalized and you want decimal number and here you want to specify the precision explicitly. So let's say uh, two. Press OK. And now we got numbers with uh, two digits after the comma. So let's go ahead and stylize the map again. First you want to save the edits, so when we edit a column, when we actually open the field calculator, an editing session was started automatically. So we want to save the edits, and then go over to properties, not here, I went to rename, to properties, go to style, and you want to change the attribute. So in this case you want to put the master degree normalized. Don't forget to press classify. Yes. And the color ramp is fine. Press OK. So we got a different situation. Oh, the map shows a ratio of uh, educated people, if you like, <laughs> with a master degree. And you can also make a map with uh, the total population, if you like. The attributes are here now, and you can do whatever you like with them. So, I hope you found this tutorial very useful. There's still one more lecture to go, because I'll show you how you can actually create a PDF map out of this QGIS project, so that you can print out the PDF map or distribute it to your audience, to the people who want to, to, to read your map. See you in the next lecture.